Hey, what's going on guys? It's Nick here, back in with another video. Now, today's video is a bit more of a discussion topic, or a more serious topic, from how I view it at least. I'm here to talk about the orange line, because a lot has been happening with it within the past, within the past couple weeks, and there have been some major new developments that have come out within the past couple weeks, and I just want to discuss them. Um, this is regarding the shutdown for the track work, as well as a whole bunch of other things, but also, this is a video talking about the 12s, because, quite frankly, I've learned some things that are, uh, saddening, to say the least. But, just to, just to remind all of you, if you don't wanna, if you, just take what I say with a massive grain of salt. Because I don't quite know if all of, of all of the information is definitive. I do not know. I, I I've waited a while to make this video because, for one, I wanted to see, for one, I wanted to see how the orange line closure would play out within the within the couple weeks of it being shut down. See what the progress is, and then make a video about the progress report. Maybe about like halfway in between the shutdown, which around now is around like the halfway point. It's September 5th as of the recording of this video and all that sort of thing. So without further ado, let's go ahead and get started. So I just want to first start off and just inform people who might not know what exactly is going on. For those of you who might not know, the Orange Line has been shut down for a month. It shut down on August 19th and will reopen on September 18th. Um, this came this came in light of the MBTA being investigated by the Federal Transit Administration, uh, which this is a big deal. And for those of you who might not know, the MBTA has been having some serious safety. They've been having a lot of incidents, but mostly they've been having a lot of safety incidents that have kind of put their ass on the line, and which thus the FTA or the Federal Transit Administration has looked into has looked into the MBTA system. They've been doing a whole investigation into the MBTA because what what they've seen on the surface and from what we have seen on the surface, it is truly and deeply concerning. the the amount of the amount of incidents and events that have happened within the last two years alone, it's it's insane. It it really is. The red line has derailed twice. The orange line has caught on fire. There have been two crashes on the green line and. Most recently, a panograph hit the top of, I think it, from what I can tell, the Orient Heights Bridge at Orient Heights. And uh, all of these, all of these uh, incidents have just kind of, have triggered a safety investigation by the, by the Federal Transit Administration into the MBTA. Because from what they can see on the surface, as well as from what we can see, there, there are clearly some things wrong here. Because there shouldn't be this amount of safety problems on a transit system like this is this is not okay and quite frankly I feel like the Federal Transit Administration made a good move here investigating them and telling them hey get your shit together make sure your system is safe we're gonna look into you and we're gonna give you we're gonna give you a whole list of things for you to improve in not just safety but also reliability as well and so the Federal Transit Administration for the past like I don't even know how long now but it's been at least a couple months now they've been doing they've been doing a deep investigation into the MBTA and I think only just recently they came out with the final definitive report or safety report on them and it has outlined a lot of things but about halfway into about halfway into the summer this is like late July the the Federal Transit Administration had I, they had released like a short statement outlining like five bullet points of things that the MBTA needed to do. For one, they needed to increase staffing in the operations control center, as well as I think another place as well, I don't exactly remember, as well as they need to address track maintenance that has been has been deferred for about a couple years now. In which in this specific like early report of the of their findings, they specifically outlined a specific section on the orange line between Tufts Medical Center and Back Bay. They specifically said that that, that area there has been in a slow zone since 2019, and it's been going on for a long time and they have not fixed it. As well as various other things, as well as like safety protocols, uh, retraining personnel, and 
re reassessing them to see if they're even qualified for the job, and a whole bunch of other things. And since all this has come out, the MBTA has kind of has kind of put on their nice suit and like listen to the Federal Transit Administration, which is good, because quite frankly, if the FTA is looking into your transit system, that's not good. So what they've done is that they have reduced service on the red, blue, and orange lines so that they, so that they're, until they get more people in the operations control center, or dispatchers, they need more dispatchers, so they reduce service on all, he, on all the, on all the rapid transit lines, excluding the green line, because for whatever reason, I don't know why they didn't reduce service on the green line, because the green line is a hectic shit show in my mind. If there have been two crashes on it, then they should have reduced service with, alongside that too. But I'm not here to just rant about the green line. I'm talking about the orange line. But with the with the report that the FTA has released recently, um, this is after this is they released the full report after the MBTA closed the orange line. But before the MBTA did close the orange line, and what I just talked about the like in mid July when they released their five like bullet point like uh, thing telling them what they need to do, the MBTA was. This is, from what I've seen on, like, various other, like, news sites, and even from the meeting that the Federal Transit Administration had, the MBTA had been doing some serious thinking, and were looking at the report that was, that the FTA was, was creating at the time, and they realized they had a lot of work that they had to do, and specifically on the orange line, and well, ultimately, they decided that they were going to close the orange line for 30 days, and try to get and try to get five years worth of track and infrastructure improvements done in just 30 days which quite frankly this is unprecedented this is crazy that the MBTA closed the entire orange line for a month about a week prior to it a week prior to the whole line closing the MBTA had had basically had a contract with several different shuttle bus companies to have shuttle buses running from Forest Hills all the way to Oak Grove minus a couple areas specifically i think like downtown crossing area because quite frankly you don't want to drive through downtown crossing it's it's a traffic nightmare so they bought a whole bunch of shuttle buses and they had a game plan of how to replace orange line service while this track work was being done and the mbta elaborated on this and stated that by closing the orange line for 30 days this would allow 24 hour access to the tracks and which would allow them to get all of this work done in a much more efficient way. Because the MBTA closes at around maybe 12.34 12 a.m. in the morning. That's when the last train leaves its terminal station and goes to the other station, and that's the last train of the night. From then, well, the opening hour of all the lines is around like 4 or 5 in the morning. So that gives track workers only about 5 hours-ish to get a bunch of track work done, which realistically, that's not a lot of time, because for one, you have to move all the equipment in there, get some of the work done, and then figure out how to haul all of the equipment out back to wherever the holding facility is, or the yard, and all that sort of thing. And the MBTA specifically stated that allow by closing the orange line for 30 days, it would remove this restriction of having to move the equipment and all of the tracks and all that sort of thing to do the improvements, it would it would eliminate them having to move supplies back and forth between nightly shifts and whatever. So that's why they closed it for 30 days, which quite frankly, I feel like it was a good move because the slow zones on the orange line were getting a bit ridiculous. I mean, there was a slow zone between Jackson Square and Stony Brook, as well as Back Bay and Tufts Medical Center. And I think there was also a slow zone between North Station and Community College, as well as I think... Community College to Sullivan Square. Alongside those slow zones, which tracks had to be replaced because they were getting worn down, like heavily worn down, they were going to work on that for the closure. Alongside that, they were going to do signal upgrades at Oak Grove, I think from, from Wellington all the way to Oak Grove, because they had not finished upgrading all of the signals on that portion of the Orange Line yet. And alongside that, I think they've also been doing some infrastructure upgrades to the actual stations themselves. Uh, from what I've seen on the MBTA's Twitter, they've been improving the Malden Center, I think Sullivan Square, like, roof. They've been adding better, uh, better weathering protection, I think. I don't quite know. Um, but that's what they have been doing. And in which I've looked on NBC10 Boston's website here, 
in which I think this was posted recently. Yeah, September 2nd. So this was only three days ago. The Orange Line work is 50% done, the MBTA says. Now, in this is a screenshot from what I think is from the presentation that was given at the press conference or whatever it is. They said that they have completed overall 50% of the, the work that needs to be done. And this is day 13, mind you. Um, so they have 49% of track replacements done, about 1,715 feet of track out of 3,500 feet of track has been replaced. Special track renewal, uh, 17 out of 20 units has been replaced. And I think, um, I think these are rail fasteners or whatever. 88 out of 400 rail fasteners have been replaced as well as rail replacements um, and like ballast, all that sort of thing, as well as the signal upgrades have been going well as well. About one out of six slow zones have been removed. And in this, which is, which is new as well, the new Orange Line train's readiness is about 93% complete, and which there are a total of 56 cars on the property right now. Now, what this means right here is that well, before the closure, on the last day that the Orange Line was open, a whole bunch of people were out foaming the, the Twelves and, and the Hawkers and everything. And I, at the beginning, I was not quite ready to accept that this might be the last day that the Twelves were running because I, I believe that the Twelves, they just need a little bit more time. I'm personally not ready for them to go, but the MBTA is. And... I think if you look on the New England, uh, the MBTA fleet roster on NewEnglandTransit.com here, there has been a whole bunch of updates to the Orange Line section here. Now, underneath the Orange Line fleet car, you can see we have 188 cars, and there are, there are 84 cars on order right now. So as for the 12s, there are now 70 cars active and 46 cars out of service. And as for the 14s, there are 64 cars active and 4 plus 84 cars on additional order. Now, what this means is that, okay, so the peak vehicle requirement for the Orange Line is 96 cars, or 16 six-car trains running at once. Now, given what I stated earlier with the, with the MBTA um, reducing service on the red, blue, and orange lines, they have reduced service on there, which means there are less trains running. Now, given that, given this, given this graphic on the NBC10 Boston website here, the new Orange Line trains is about 93% complete out of 60 cars being in service. What this means is that when the line reopens, it will most likely be 1,400 cars running on the line. And reason why I say this is because there, there, since there are less cars running on the line right now. They don't need to have 14s and 12s. They have enough 14s to run on the main line without having to without having to put on any 12s for like for extras. All, there are enough 14s to be running full service as of right now. What people have told me is that they are keeping some 12s on the property in case the 14s go belly up and some other incident happens and some other incident occurs with them. Now this is. It's sad to say the least. The the twelves are they're on their way out. They are they're getting retired. It's um it's happen it's happening and I, I, I don't know how to explain it any other way. But to further back up this statement, we're gonna look at out of service orange line cars. So now there are fifty four cars out of service in total. Fifty twelve cars and four number fourteen cars. The cars listed under the twelves are awaiting disposal, which means they are waiting to get scrapped. Cars number 1202, 1203, 1204, 1208, 1209, 1218, 1219, 1222, 1223, 1224, 1225, 1228, 1239, 1230, Sixty-six, sixty-seven, sixty-eight, sixty-nine, seventy, seventy-one, seventy-four, seventy-five, thirteen, sixteen, and thirteen, seventeen. That is fifty cars. That those are fifty. Those are fifty twelves getting ready to be retired. Now, another note that this that this website um, gives you is that the number twelve car scrapping. The MBTA will award a contract to scrap all one hundred twenty cars in groups of thirty. The scrapping of the first group is expected to uh, to start August twenty twenty-two. 
Now, I have a buddy back in Boston, and he says that no cars have been scrapped yet. Now, that does not mean that the 12s are getting saved. It's, I, it's unfortunate, unfortunately, I have to say, they're getting scrapped. It's, it's, it's happening, all right? The 14s are here to stay. There's nothing that we can do. No matter how much we try, there's nothing we can do. Now, quite frankly, it is a bit depressing for, for many 12 fans out there, like myself, but it is, it is the reality, and we do have to face it. So yeah, the 12s are on their way out right now, and when the line reopens, it will be all 14s running on the line. The only time that there will be 12s running is if the line, do if there are more dispatchers hired by the time that the orange line reopens or sometime after it reopens, and that there are more dispatchers in the operations control center, then there will be more cars on the line, in which then you might see 12s running. However, I do not know if that will be the case, because... I do not know the progress of the 1400s um, being delivered. There has been no information on, regarding updates to that at all. So, so yeah, I just wanted to kind of make this video just to tell everybody, just to kind of give a bit of an update on the whole Orange Line closure and all that sort of thing. Um, unfortunately, the 12s are on their way out, and it's um, it's something we're all just gonna have to deal with. Um, I'm sure many people were thinking the same thing about the 600s when the 700s were being delivered as well. But at least the 700s weren't the biggest fuck up like the 1400s were. They didn't they didn't have nearly as many problems as the 1400s did, and quite frankly, they nailed the design on the 700s. But that's a story that's a story for another video. Anyway, that's it for me. If you like what you saw, go ahead like, comment, subscribe. Dislike if you dislike it. I'll see you all in the next video. Peace.